and we hope the high watermark of some of the anger and the division that we have dealt with this entire cycle from January 6 on through. And we hope for something better for our country because that's what all Americans deserve. We are still working and any fair person and responsible observer should understand that it will take time to understand all of the races and their outcomes. I just told you what happened in mine. And we will tell you what happens in each of them, fairly and honestly and transparently. But we don't know yet what the outcome will be in, at a minimum, a couple dozen races. And we don't know where the dust will settle. But I can tell you there's going to be a two-handle on it and probably a lot better than that. And as we sit here, I can't, with 100% certainty, tell you who holds the House majority. But I will leave it to others to make predictions. We're going to do it the right way. And if we fall a little short, uh, we're going to know that we gave it our all, and we beat the spread. And I want to thank our candidates, who were remarkable, whose hard work and dedication fueled the defense that defines what happened last night. I want to thank all of our volunteers, all of our donors, all the people who believed in us, who read that we didn't have a chance and went to work anyway. In this life, how you handle defeat is as important as how you handle success. And we had an equal measure of both last night. I want to thank my Democratic colleagues for their support. And I want to tell you, it is the honor of a lifetime to work with Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She's a remarkable and historic figure in American politics. And without her, so much of this would have been for naught. And just on a personal level, I've learned so much from her, and I will always treasure uh, the time we've spent over the last two years traveling around the country uh, working on this project. I want to thank the DCCC staff, starting with my executive director, Tim Persico, and all of the people who work here. They're about half my age, most of them. And they are smart, and they are decent, hardworking people, and they believe in something bigger than themselves. And I couldn't be more proud of them. And I think they're going to look back for the rest of their career and boast about being part of the team that delivered this result in 2022. With all the forces and all the money arrayed against us, and everybody's saying we couldn't. And I hope they're proud of that. But they're still working, because we've still got work to do. And the work doesn't stop with one race or one cycle. Um, but we're proud of our president. We're proud of the values we stand for. We're proud of the legislative accomplishments we've won. We're proud of our candidates and our supporters. And we will keep working to give you all the results as fast as we can in a way that is fair and honest and follows the law, because that's what the American people deserve. Happy to take a couple of questions. Go ahead, Andrew. Right. We have a call scheduled at noon to discuss the results with the caucus. Uh, it'll be a slightly more detailed version of what I've just told you. Mr. given everything you said about how uncertain the final results are, what message do you think the American people are trying to send us? I don't think the American people have given up on democracy. And I think with all of the headwinds and all of the damage from the pandemic and the Trump years, uh, 
there's still a beating heart to American democracy, and I think he saw it last night. They're not giving up on people with common sense and good values. Um, and by the way, we don't have a monopoly on that. We're not perfect. And there's many good Republicans and independents out there. But I think enough of us, as the president said in his inaugural, still believe in this project, that uh, the American people can be proud of themselves uh, for staying in this fight with us. Paul. Oh. Yeah, um, I don't want to make this about me. Um, I don't like. No, that that uh, I want to guarantee you, there's not one seat on that board that I don't I don't mourn the loss of, um, and and be and it is that competitive nature that uh, will also, you know, allow me to answer your question honestly and say, I don't like to lose. Uh, but my opponent won this race and he won it fair and square. And that means something. And so I'm gonna step aside. And I, I had a good run and I have, a, I have an incredible husband who's been with me for 30 years, including right now. And we got three great kids and we have been blessed beyond anything uh, I could have imagined as a young man. And, uh, and so I'm deeply grateful to the people of the Hudson Valley for giving me their voice and their vote in Washington for 10 years. I'm not gonna whine about it. Um, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this the right way. And the right thing to do is to say, the other guy won, to wish him well and to pledge my support. And that's what I'm doing. And uh, I'm going to take pride in my service, uh, and then I'm going to talk to my family about what comes next. Yeah. Well, I think I think like all of us, he's very interested in where we where we end up. Um, like I said, it's better than anybody thought, and that's good for him. And I and I really mean it when I tell you that um, the president deserves real credit for tackling the crises that he found when he came into office. Uh, he hasn't got everything done he wants to do. He's not perfect, but I'll tell you what, he's a good, decent man doing important things for the American people. And I think last night should encourage him that despite the opposition, despite the anger and the hatred and the lies that he has faced, the implacable obstruction that he has encountered, that he's making progress and that we're gonna get through this together. And it's because of his leadership and the leadership of Speaker Pelosi and House Democrats and all of our candidates and all of our supporters. And we're gonna go back to work to finish the work of this cycle and to carry forward with the values that have propelled us. One more. Look, I think we'll have more about uh, we'll have more to say about that. I think as we know more, but um, for today, what I'll tell you is that uh, Tim Persigo, my executive director, built the best team in American politics, and they believed in each other, and they believed in our candidates, and we resisted the temptation to chase shiny objects, and we were disciplined and focused, and we did the work, and. And I'm a big believer in doing the fundamentals, and I think we did that well. But look, the results will speak for themselves. I've always said I will be judged by the results, and I'm as okay with that this morning as I was two years ago when I told you the first time. Thank you guys very much.